Whew. It is cold in British Columbia now. I don't know what, what it was supposed to drop down this morning, but it was pretty chilly. I think it was about minus eight or something, minus nine, and uh, the wind was just screaming all day long, which really uh, added to the frozen factor. But I losing light here. But I managed to bring uh, camera gear with me today. Got done early today. So uh, uh, get to do a little update video for everybody. And uh, I'm gonna read you a story. And uh, again, it's amazing the the various social groups that people come from they are looking for answers and have had experiences with uh, these unknown beings. And they've been emailing me like crazy. And, and that's fun. Email away. I'm here to uh, I'm here to help any way I can. So uh, I've got a lot to share coming up with everyone. Um, and as well, I come up with something. I think I'm going to uh, join forces with a, a select handful of very very credible stand-up individuals who really truly care about everybody. And, uh, and we're going to create something that's going to help a lot of people. And that's the only reason we're going to create it too, because it's needed. Um, you know, there's a lot of people involved in, in this topic. Um, there's a lot of credible, good people involved in this topic, but sadly there's a lot of people as well that aren't so credible and uh, they don't really have people's... and they don't really have uh, much interest in truly helping people as, as, as much as they do helping themselves, you know, and uh, it's quite apparent. And I think uh, it's time to possibly put an end to that and offer up some super, super support and help for people. And that's what I'm, I'm going to, and that's what we're going to do. So anyway, um, it is chilly. All right, I'm going to share an email received from a man from back east in the United States. Just another case of somebody who had something happen, had an experience they didn't ask for, and it's completely changed everything for them. And he's looking for answers as well, you know. You know, personally, I don't think I'm looking for answers as much as I'm looking for support for people who are being discredited. Because it's getting real old. You know, people getting used by various people that are interested in this topic is getting really old. Um, people getting shit on and discredited is getting really old. And uh, I think we just gotta, it's just, it's just time to do something about it, you know. But uh, here we go. I got a quick story I'm going to share with you all. Make of it what you will. And uh, <laughs> let's see who we can trigger today. Get that dislike button finger warmed up. <laughs> oh man, it's been a long month. I've been in the I've been in the mountains every single day in uh, southwestern British Columbia, going straight up and straight down and over and sideways and all around. And I am getting beat up and tired. But uh, here we go. Listen to this one. Hello. Thank you for taking time to read this. I had an insane situation unfold just feet away from me one early morning here on the East Coast of the United States. I've been a reverend for nearly 25 years and have always made it a habit to walk, to exercise, and meditate as much as my weekly schedule allows me to. Oh my god, my face is frozen. <laughs> I was asked to help out at a struggling church for a season, which required my family to move to a new area. The town was nestled close to three adjoining East Coast states. I'd found a local park with plenty of acreage to walk, and it seemed very peaceful. I had been using the park for 10 months when the encounter took place. I had heard some unusual noises through the 10 months, but attributed them to being in a new area with new sounds, etc. There was a path in the back of the park that was sort of shaped like a very large horseshoe, and in the middle of the path grew tall wild grass. The grass area was usually filled with bird, with bird activity, which I liked. One early morning, I entered that path like I normally do, and it was literally dead quiet and there were no bird sounds at all. It hit me immediately how odd that was. I took maybe 25 to 30 steps into the path when I heard rustling to my left in the tall grass. I thought maybe I had disturbed some sleeping deer, but then I heard what sounded like a horse blowing through its mouth to my right. As I looked to my right, I saw what looked like a large, heavy man covered in hair just standing there, sort of facing slightly away from me. It just stood there, and I was struggling to understand what I was looking at. Then the noise to my left exploded through the grass away from me, and I thought I could see the grass moving. I never saw what was there. My head started ringing, which was really weird. 
I guess it was adrenaline. Then I looked quickly back to my right and this thing standing there I quickly shot down to the ground to its left and crawled away at a speed that seemed completely impossible. I'm not sure how to explain how it crawled away, but the only thing I can equate it to is an insect. It looked like a long, hairy insect crawling at high speed. Once it was moving away, I turned and ran like a scared little boy. I had no idea what to think or say afterwards. I've tried to sort it out and have prayed a lot. I guess my question at this stage is, why don't we know about these things? Right? I had a parishioner years ago come into my office to talk and eventually get his sighting off his chest. I really believed he believed what he saw, but I had no information or any way to relate to him. Sadly, I do now. I know this all sounds far out, and after all this time, I'm still attempting to sort it out. But this really happened, and I'm suspicious about what these things are and its purpose here on Earth. I now take my early morning walks on the paved roads and sidewalks in my neighborhood. I'm not sure I'll ever be comfortable enough again to be in around wooded areas. I'm not a wimp, but from what I've experienced that morning, it's not something I'd like to see or feel again in this lifetime. Thanks for your time and your ear, Pastor Scott. Pastor Scott, you're very welcome. And thank you for sharing your story with myself and everybody else. Hopefully it comes in handy for others. Whew. So there you go, there's another one. They don't stop coming, and they are endless. It's funny, uh, I've heard of numerous people that have witnessed something similar to that, these things getting down nearly flat to the ground and, and uh, taking off at a rapid speed. And I think if anything would alarm somebody, that sure as hell would. Holy shit. Think about it. And, uh, it's funny, uh, that reminds me too as well, my, uh, my farrier, who's lived in this community forever, when he told me of his encounter, he mentioned the same thing. He said that the one thing that stuck out with him the most was the speed that the thing ripped across the road in front of his truck. He said that really, really scared him. So uh, myself, I've never seen anything like that. I'm not craving to see anything like that, but um, obviously it sure must be pretty alarming to see something absolutely unknown, unfamiliar with, intimidating by sight, and uh, to see it move that fast must be really something else. And uh, Sadly, dozens and dozens of people have seen something similar. So anyway, there you go. There's another quick story to share with all you guys. Pastor Scott, I hope it helps you to see somebody read your uh, experience with confidence and uh, support, because that's what we're here for, okay? And uh, man, I gotta get going home. I am, I am frozen. It's been a long, it's been a long month. Whew. I actually don't know what day I'm on right now. I thought it was 28, but I think it's 32 or 33. Whatever. But either way, I'm, uh, I'm in the mountains of British Columbia every single day, all day. So I can't really complain about that. And uh, I, think, I think many of you would rather hear somebody that does what I do for a living talk about this um, than possibly... Um, somebody talking to you from a webcam inside a house non-stop. <laughs> Nothing against people that do that, but whatever. But anyway, um, uh, side note, a friend of mine, you probably heard of him, David Polides. He has just published and released his latest book, uh, Missing 411 Canada. Um, he mailed a copy to me uh, last week, and uh, I'll, I'll show it up here in... Uh, I'll show you a photo of it right here. I don't have it with me. Obviously, I didn't bring it out in the woods with me, but I'll, I'll show you a copy of it here. And if you are interested, um, I strongly suggest you grab his book and, uh, and give it a read. And uh, there's a lot of interesting cases in there, a lot of sad, frustrating, missing cases in there. And uh, it's just something that everybody should be aware of. And uh, you got to give David credit. Just think about all the work it took to look into these unfortunate um, occurrences with missing people. And it's, it's, they're still unsolved today, many of them, and it's pretty sad. But, um, yeah, make sure you go check this book out. It may help you out. It may help people who are involved. And um, it's just information that the public needs to have. So there you go. Then uh, I have another book that I would really love to steer a lot of you to. And it is a book wrote by a friend of mine, Scott Carpenter. And uh, he is probably one of the most credible people I've ever come across when it comes to the topic of Sasquatch and unknown beings. 
and he has a very, very detailed, factual, honest book that discusses the DNA of these things uh, and what goes on in the um, the Bigfoot Sasquatch community with all of these these researcher groups going at each other's throats, discrediting each other, attacking each other, like a bunch of school kids stuffed in a in a tight classroom. It's kind of embarrassing, really. It's unfortunate. It is what it is. Um, but again, I guess it kind of shows everybody why I stay. I keep I just keep my distance from those groups of people. Um, there's, a, there's obviously there is a handful of people out there looking into these things that are very credible, uh, very stubborn and hardworking, and they're coming up with the answers for themselves, and that's great. But uh, sadly, there is a pile of people out there that are doing nothing but no good <laughs> when it comes to this topic. And uh, getting back to the Robert Kennedy story that was absolutely taken advantage of by one of these larger, renowned um, Bigfoot Sasquatch groups. Um, there's a handful of people that are mentioning we should do something for them, and believe me, that's been in my mind since day one, and yes, we are going to do something for them. Um, this is going to take a little bit of time yet, and I really want to talk to him. I need to go out, the, out to uh, their current home and meet up with them and have a real good chat with them. But uh, we're definitely going to put in an effort to right some wrongs that some some uh, some people have, have created for some innocent folks out there. And uh, we're definitely going to do something in... I'll, I'll uh, show all of you how you can take part in correcting a big wrong for these particular people and uh, hopefully we can help some other people along the way that possibly need some assistance after being wronged by these uh, these uh, these groups <laughs> you know it's really unfortunate but the good thing is as long as we uh, find all the good credible people to stick together we can do some great things you know So there you go. There's some news. There's a new story. I gotta get my butt home. I'm freaking starving and frozen. I got horses to feed. <laughs>